Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm back after, I don't know, it's been probably almost a month since I've played this. Uh, I don't remember where I am or what I'm supposed to do. Um, I think I'm just gonna... Yeah, I, I just powered this up and I don't know, uh, no idea what's going on. So I'm just gonna quick pause and go have a look at the recording and stuff uh, and figure out what to do. Okay, all right, so I just had a quick look at the recording to figure out what exactly it was I did last. Uh, and I, uh, apparently I'd fought uh, the golem boss in uh, that sky area. Uh, which was helpful because then I could look up a guide here to see, uh, you know, kind of in text more like where exactly I was. Just trying to heal here. Yeah, I don't really want to do this. No. No. Uh, there should be uh, some healing stuff here somewhere. Because we are uh, quite injured. Yeah, so uh, if I didn't have the recording, that would it would be uh, it would be a real pain to fi find out where where I am. This is like exactly what happened uh, every previous time. I'd stop playing for you know a couple weeks or whatever, uh, and then just not know where to go and not know where I am because you know I'm I'm in sixty five thousand uh, BC or whatever, uh, which you go back here several times, so just looking for that in the guide, you know, you'd have no idea where you are. That That's what always happened. I'd not know where I was, and then, uh, you know, I'd spend a while pouring through guide trying to figure out, you know, where I was and what I was doing and stuff. And then just kind of, like, give up or be like, okay, well, I'll figure this out later and then just never coming back to it. So I need to, not there. Yeah, so apparently I'm, I just, I'm mostly playing this uh, blind and everything. I just kind of looked up just to get my bearings again. I'm supposed to he uh, head up here into the portal and then go back to the, uh, the end of time. That's all I know. Yeah, so and also looking at the end of the recording there, I saw that uh, I guess I can open those doors and chests now that have the strange markings. I could have just healed here. Yeah, so apparently he'll tell me kind of what to do next. We need the wings of time. Uh, okay. Alright, so I seem to remember some of my characters don't have their magic yet. So I should probably just uh, check everyone.
Oh, no, I don't want to try it out. I guess he must be immune to everything but magic. Yeah, so I was going through this uh, pretty good there for a while, playing it, uh, you know, a couple hours most days, uh, making pretty good progress. And then uh, I got the... I don't know, I got the third COVID shot there, um, it was around, I don't know, the beginning of January, and, uh, I felt, uh, you know, okay for, you know, just a little under the weather for a couple days, and then I got, like, really sick, uh, it was, it was almost a week later, uh, I don't know if it was, uh, the shot, or if I actually got COVID or not, but, uh, I was just horrible for like a week there. Uh... Okay, frog's done. Yeah, we're he's gonna beat us, but uh, I don't think it matters. Yeah, so just every day I was just super tired. I was sleeping like 14 hours a day and stuff. Uh, I just had no energy or anything. Even when I was awake, I just... Uh... I couldn't even concentrate or anything. Uh, I was just so like drowsy all the time. Uh, so yeah, that ha that lasted like a week or so. All right. Uh... All right let's see. Uh, Marl and Luca both have theirs. Robo doesn't have any, uh, okay, so it was just frog I needed. Uh, see, I like Isla because of her, uh, berserk thing that I gave her, um, and Marl for being able to heal. Alright, so what is, what are we doing here? Wings of Time. Alright, um... No. Alright, um, uh, my... I, I don't remember, this is probably something where... Uh... I'd be able to remember better if it wasn't, like, a month later. Uh, I'm gonna guess that it's these guys. Uh, just cause... Wings of time, like it's a, it's gonna be an airship or something. So, uh, probably the only people who can actually make uh, like an airplane makes sense. Yeah, so I was really sick for like a week, and then even after that, I just didn't feel that great. Uh, plus, since I was sick for a week, I didn't like do any work for hardly for a week. And uh, so I got kind of really behind in work. Uh, we'll go to the factory, right? Yeah, I got really behind in work. Where am I? I guess I gotta go through. Ah, oh, this is the right. Alright, at least I don't have to do that mini game anymore. Yeah, so then I got really behind at work and uh, had to kind of catch up. Uh, and also, I still didn't really feel like doing this. Uh, and then, I don't know, after that, I don't know, there was, there's been a lot of news about uh, Total War, Warhammer 3 lately, and so I was getting kind of uh, hyped up about that, and uh, I had a 
campaign partway through a high elf campaign. And I decided I should probably finish it before Warhammer 3 comes out. These guys, uh... Yeah, so I wanted to finish that, and I thought, okay, uh, you know, I'm on, like, turn 50 or whatever. A uh, couple hours and I'll be finished with it, but if you've ever played those games before, you know, like, uh, just how long a campaign takes, and how much longer each turn takes as you go through. Like, at the start of the game, you know, one turn is, you know, ten or so minutes. Uh, but by the end of the game, on turn 100, uh, you know, you've got 10 armies or 15 armies uh, scattered all over the place, uh, and every one of them is doing, like, a really difficult battle that you have to you have to do play the ba battle manually instead of auto-resolving. Uh, so the turns start taking more and more, and, uh, yeah, so I probably played that for another, like, I don't know, 40 hours or so, uh, just trying to uh, get through it. Yeah, so that, that took up uh, another uh, good while. Aside from that, I haven't been playing too many other games since I last played this. Um, uh, I did finish up uh, Man Eater. Uh, I think I had kind of talked about that a bit before, but I, I did completely finish it now, 100%. And, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, not. Uh, you know, not super great or anything, but yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, I think this must be where it is. I, this is where all the people are. was somebody working on something oh wait there was a uh, there was a door in here somewhere but Must have been in the basement. Yeah, so, um, what else was it I played recently? Uh, oh, yeah, of course, I put out that video for the, uh, uh, Chikvane Gurai Meshi Hogan. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I saw the demo was up. I think I heard about it on, uh, uh what's that? Uh, Gimats. Yeah, uh, Gimats is, like, really the only, uh, gaming news site I follow. Uh, they put up a good amount of, like, Japanese news and stuff, like, they actually cover, like, the exclusive Japan releases. And they're also, uh, you know, they have, like, no clickbait, no hot takes, no trolling or anything like that. Not like Kotaku or Polygon or most of the others. 
Uh, they're really just black and white. Uh, you know, this game is, has been announced. It will be released on whatever date. And, you know, that's like all they do. So, uh, yeah, they're like the only ones I follow. Yeah, it's, I'd seen that on there and I decided, uh, I don't know, it would be fun just to go through the demo at least. Uh, basically all I played was what was in the video. It was, I don't know, it was okay, but it wasn't, wasn't quite what I was looking for. I don't know, it seemed like a pretty, like a good enough game, but I don't know, I, I don't think I'm gonna end up getting it. I do, yeah, I have a, oh, that's where I gotta go, get, um, get over there. I remember playing on, uh, I think it was ZSNES or something, uh, or playing this emulator, or maybe it was like SNES 9X, but a much older version. Uh, I remember playing it, uh, playing this game in that at some point when it was less accurate, and there was, uh, I remember this area, the fog would be uh, not transparent. You'd have to like go into the settings and turn off that layer here. What was it I just got? Uh, just some equipment. That's weird. That's, uh, it would be nice if it would say what her current equipment does. Uh, MP cut by half, okay. Alright, I guess I wanna check what this is. Okay. Um... Alright, uh, I had thought this would be, like, those wings or whatever that they had talked about, that I would go in there and that would be, you know, where they, uh, where they are, or, you know, an NPC or something. If I can get uh, further in. Okay, yeah, it's just uh, it's just this thing again. Okay, um, 
There doesn't seem to be anything else in here. How do I get out of here now? I guess I'll just head back to the world map and, I don't know, see where else I gotta go. Or where else I can go. Yeah, so aside from that other video, um, I do have... There's two other Japanese games I've played that uh, I think I've mentioned both of them before, but I want to... I've started videos uh, on both of them, and I'm hoping to kind of finish the video sometime. I, like, I started the videos months and months ago, but... Uh, uh, so one of them is for... Uh, one of them was for a... It's basically Advance Wars, but fantasy based on the Super Famicom, and the other one it's basically Fire Emblem gameplay but Toho uh, characters, and it's for the Switch. Uh, both of them are Japan only, uh, and I've got like some footage recorded and I, with me talking, but it isn't very good, so I was hoping to kind of, you know, actually edit it and cut it up and stuff, uh, and uh, re-record the, the, some of the talking and stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, what had kept me from doing that for a while was basically that, uh, uh, so typically I edit with, uh, DaVinci Resolve, and there was something wrong with it where, uh, you're supposed to be able to just go in and, like, look at the footage and record. Uh, okay, I gotta, I I'm just gonna quick check what's uh, what's next in the guide because I have I have no idea what to do and I don't want to just wander around forever uh, here okay uh, I'm supposed to go to sewer it's south of lab 32 uh, okay this is Aristone. Oh, sewer, sewer access, right? Uh, lab 32, okay. We're supposed to go in here. Yeah, I don't... Uh... Oh, okay, there's a scene at least letting me know that something is going on here. I don't think I was in here before, like last time I came to this area. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I was having a problem with DaVinci Resolve, where uh, you're supposed to be able to just, like, record audio over top of, you know, into a separate track, you know, directly from your mic, so you can scrub through and say, okay, uh, you know, record new lines and edit it directly, but... Uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to do that. Like, there was just, my mic just wouldn't appear in it, and, you know, no, no other recording devices was. Like, Resolve was just broken, and I, I had tried fixing it, uh, and, you know, I, I just couldn't get it to work. And so that really kind of put a damper on trying to actually do properly edited videos, because anytime I wanted audio, I would have to separately open Audacity and then record whatever line, save it, export it as an mp3, import it in Resolve, and then put it where, I wa where it was supposed to go. And I'd have to like label the files and stuff so I didn't get them mixed up. And so even a short video, I'd end up with like, you know, 50 little five second mp3 files. Uh, And it was just, it was such a pain. Uh, Alright, uh, I thought I had picked something up. Okay, I just, uh, I didn't see what that was. I was just, for some reason I thought it was a tab, but I guess not. What's happening here? Alright, it's good that there was cutscenes and stuff there. Just to let you know, like, okay, this is where you're supposed to go.
but yeah, when I went to uh, when I went to do the video for the uh, Shikbane Gurai Meshi Boken, and uh, for some reason OBS had exported as MKV files. I don't know why. I don't remember changing that or whatever. Uh, or why I changed that. Maybe it was... I think trying to get like smaller file size. But yeah, they were... They were MKV and then when I went to load them into Resolve, uh, it wouldn't load them because the version I was using didn't have support for them. Uh, so I just went and I downloaded the newest version, which... I had not done up until then because, uh, I don't know, it's like a few gigs or whatever and I don't have super fast internet. Uh, so I did that and updated Resolve and it was like to a new rate major version. I think it's like 17 and I was on like 16 point something. Uh, and I had to do that to get the MKV support. I guess I click on all these enemies pop up every time. Uh, so when I did that, then it turned out that that also fixed the problem with uh, not being able to record audio. Uh, so hopefully now that I can do that, I can get the videos out on the other two games. Uh, yeah, mostly I like kind of doing videos on those kind of like, uh, you know, obscure Japan exclusives. Uh, because not many other people do them. Like, there's not... Uh... Yeah, there's not that many videos on uh, Japan exclusives. Which, that always kind of surprised me that, like... I don't know, I, I would have thought that, like, uh, Kotaku or Polygon or one of the bigger news sites, uh, like, there would be... I would think some money in it for them to just, like, hire someone who... Uh, like speaks Japanese and get them to just review Japan exclusive games as like well it's not as much now as it was you know years and years ago but there still are a fair number of games that come out in Japan you know two or three months before they come out uh, in the West so like they could get you know exclusive reviews for out for them like months ahead of time And there still are, uh, you know, also there's quite a few, there's still quite a few, uh, like, Super Famicom games and so on that, uh, you know, even if they have been translated, they aren't uh, super well-known. Like, yeah, everybody knows Live Alive and Sweet Home and so on. Uh, you know, they aren't these, like, super hidden gems, but there's still quite a few that just, like, nobody really knows about. Ah, uh, that's boss. Oh, he looks like a... Tomato worm. That's great. That really helps. Uh, I think it does, anyways. Uh, how much are the? Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Revives aren't that uh, that uncommon, but still, it's good to have that. Uh, 
and I don't I don't remember if the revives like fully heal them or whatever, but uh, that could be good too. Hi, uh, fat. Yeah, so I'm thinking. Uh, I think I was supposed to go through here way back when I first came to this era and or I, I don't know maybe if I was supposed to or not but uh, I think I I could have uh, yeah because that boss was way too easy And a lot of these enemies, too, I'm just one-shotting them. Uh... Yeah, so, like, there's still... There's lots of uh, Super Famicom games that aren't... That they're really good, and some of them have translations, but they're not as popular as, uh, you know, a lot of the other ones that everyone knows about. Uh, like... Uh... I don't know, for example, I played a game called Light Fantasy once, because uh, I always like just, you know, playing through these exclusive, Japan-exclusive games. Uh, and it was, it was really interesting. It was like, uh, I don't think I'll make a video on it, because, you know, I played it years ago, but uh, uh, it was basically like Dragon Quest, but uh, you just, uh, you can just, uh, recruit like anybody like any NPC to your party like you go into a town and there'll be like you know the the old lady who sells magic spells and you can just recruit her into your party and then she's like a powerful wizard or uh you know there's a dog wandering around town and you recruit him and like he's like a really powerful fighter or uh you know there's like the bunny girl at the bar and you can recruit her or but it's just like anyone it's you know, there's probably hundreds of uh, different NPCs you can get. Uh, you can also recruit, like, any monsters, too. So, like, that's a really cool idea. And, yeah, a lot of them are just, like, weak. Like, if you hire just... Or if you recruit just some, like, kid from the town or some old guy or whatever, he's gonna suck. But, uh... Yeah, like, it was a, I don't know, it was a really cool game. And there is a Light Fantasy 2. I haven't played it yet, but, uh... That would be, I don't know, I might play it sometime. Uh, yeah, there's just so many, like, cool games like that that uh, they don't really get as much attention. So, yeah, I was hoping now, sometime, I might finish up those two videos. Uh... Because both of them, I wasn't totally happy with just what I recorded, and I thought it might be good to do like a bit more, put a bit more effort in, and actually like edit and stuff. Uh, and now that I can just record directly into Resolve, that'll make that a lot less painful. I, I I did a circle here or something. Uh, I think I'm kind of lost. I I hit that button to open that door or whatever, and then I went the other way.
brown back and press the switch. Okay, so I did... Okay, th that's where I had pressed it. Okay. Ah, oh, right, and then I pressed that, and that took me over to the left. Okay. I thought that would be like a door to like a different room or something, not just a little shortcut around. Okay, but I, yeah, I came through here already. Dome. I don't remember if I was here or not. Okay, so this is it. So I take it. Okay. Maybe I need Luca here. No? Uh, Luca and Robo. Should I leave? What's he got there? A forklift?
Ah, uh, okay, that's the uh, cockpit. I'm supposed to go. Oh. Okay, uh... Get the party back together. Uh, I still don't know which channel I'm supposed to go to, so I'll just check the guide here. Uh, Alright, it says uh, 12,000 BC is where I'm supposed to go. I don't think I was here before. Okay, he's actually got uh, good stuff. Right, I remember them talking about these people uh, when I was in that sky area.
Uh, since the last time I also played, uh, well, we got Maneater, uh, Warhammer 2, the High Elf campaign. Uh, and then I played uh, Picto Quest on the Switch. Uh, this is, it's basically, uh, uh, it's Picross. Uh, but it's got kind of the uh, little twist where you're kind of like against an enemy and they, like they have a bar that charges up and then if it gets full they hit you and you lose some health. But when you complete a row it empties the bar. Uh, aside from that it's basically normal pick Ross. Uh, oh, and there's a couple items you can use to like heal or uh, display some answers or freeze them or whatever but uh yeah, it's basically just normal pick ross with a bit of a twist uh yeah i was mostly just playing it because i was so like zoned out there from being sick and uh i just needed to something like something to like keep awake like keep my brain going uh it's not terribly long. I think there was like a hundred uh, puzzles in total. Which there's there's other Picross games on the Switch that have uh, a lot more puzzles. Like uh, the other one I played uh, a couple years ago was the uh, Kimono Friends Picross game and I think it's got like a few hundred so. Uh, but yeah it was pretty fun and I think it's I think the game costs like you know, five dollars or something, so uh, it's you know good enough. I don't know if uh, these guys are... They look maybe like bosses. Hmm. Okay. They look like they're close enough to hit the spin cut, but it's not. Uh, lightning works well enough. Uh, they don't hit terribly hard. Uh, I also played uh, Armada no Kiseki on... I guess it's the Famicom Disk System. Uh, I... Yeah, I really like uh, La Mulana, and there's been a couple other games with that kind, and uh, Splunker. Uh, there's been a couple other games with that kind of uh, aesthetic, like the Indiana Jones kind of style that I've liked, so... Uh, I don't remember where I heard about this game. Uh, I think I was just, like, looking for... I don't know if it was, like, best... Uh disk system games or something. I don't remember where, but uh, yeah, I just happened to see this and thought it looked good. I played through, I think I played through most of it. I got a game over and then I didn't really feel like playing through the whole thing from the start again. But uh, it was really fun. Uh, it's kind of like a platformer style game, but you've got like this grappling uh, that you use to, yeah, it basically it shoots out at like a 45 degree and then hooks on to like anything and then you pull yourself up there. So it's a platformer, but it's like a really kind of freestyle one because you can just like hook up anywhere you want. Uh, which was kind of fun, and there's a bunch of different weapons you get. Uh, you pick up ammo for them, like you've got a gun and knives and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it was it was interesting.
Also, I did start. I started uh, Mary Skelter too. Um, I've I've actually I've got on uh, Switch. I imported the Japanese versions of Mary Skelter One and Two and Mary Skelter Nightmare. Uh, and I just started playing uh, Mary Skelter Two, and I do like it. Uh, I'm only an hour or two in, so I'm not even really done like the tutorial kind of section, but. Uh, it is pretty good so far. Uh, I'm hoping there is more background music that it changes or something, because the uh, the current background music is just uh, it's okay, but it's a really short loop, and it's really it's not very background-ish. Like it's way too like energetic and stuff and repetitive. Uh, and yeah, about like, I don't know, like 20 minutes into the game, I was just sick of it. So I'm really hoping that uh, if you've played it, you almost certainly know what I'm talking about. Alright, we need to... Come on, Chrono. Hoping to heal everyone with this. Get this heal dialogue right away. Yeah, I, I like the art style of the game, and uh, it's very cool. I don't know, like healing or something. I, I don't know. It's got a cool like aesthetic and stuff. All right, he can uh, use life on Iron Rider. So, yeah, I'm hoping. I don't know, it turns out pretty good. Uh, I didn't end up playing any more of uh, uh, the, other, the one I did a video on, the other dungeon crawler. Uh, I don't know, it was it was okay, uh, but I don't know. I've got I think there are better dungeon crawlers and. I don't know, I might get back to it sometime, but I uh, decided to just move on to something else. Uh, this is a... Enemy is a pain. Oh, I hope that doesn't... Oh, okay, good. I was a bit worried that was going to heal the blue one. Red Bull dead or something now? No? Okay. I gotta... Ah, no, not Isla. Oh, I meant to use that on Chrono. When we hit the little green guy, I think that's when he counterattacks with uh, the double attack.
Jeez, how much health do these guys have? It feels like I've been fighting them forever. Causes him then to uh, counterattack. Okay, the guide here says that they've only got 4,500 each, but. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say they should have been dead by now. He's, yeah, he's got a bit more health because uh, Marl's uh, ices didn't affect him. Alright, that is annoying. When I hit left off of Marl, it goes to Isla. It should go to Chrono. Come on, don't, don't hit him. Hit the blue guy. Yeah, aside from that, yeah, I've been just, I don't know, watching a lot of videos and stuff for uh, Warhammer 3 and Elden Ring. Those are coming out very soon now at this point. Uh, I think last time I had played this, you know, I had mentioned they were coming out like next month, but now they're, uh, I think Warhammer 3 is next week. I think it's like literally a week and a day or so away. Uh, I think there's a chance I'll probably, I don't know, I'm hoping I get this done before it comes out because I know Warhammer 3 is so, or like the Total War Warhammer games, or all the Total War games, they're so time consuming. And if I, if I get Warhammer 3, like finishing this is going to be put back like another month, so, uh, or at least to Elden Ring, well. Yeah, when Warhammer 3 comes out, I'll probably be playing it non-stop until Elden Ring comes out. And then when Elden Ring comes out, I'll probably be playing it non-stop for like another month. Okay, does this... Ah, oh, there we go. I was wondering if I had to think of some other plan, because he seemed to be healing for as much as I was hitting him for. Good, that's uh, finally done. That is good to use outside of battle. She can't use it in battle because of the Berserk, but, uh... Okay. Yeah, so I'm really hoping I get this done, uh, before Warhammer 3 comes out. Uh, even though, when it comes out, it's not gonna be... I always typically play the Mortal Empires, which takes like 40 hours to do a campaign uh, it won't there won't be moral empires to start so uh, it won't be quite as long but still uh, I'm not even sure if I'll be able to beat one campaign before Elden Ring comes out yeah that's the thing I 
I really wish they had shorter campaigns than that for Portal Empires. Uh, like, I just finished the short campaign for High Elves, but it still took me 40-ish hours, I think. It was like 100 plus turns. Because uh, it's just, you know, the, the short campaign isn't that much shorter than the long campaign. Like, the long campaign's basically, like, conquer pretty much the entire map. Uh, whereas the short campaign is like, you know, you've got to, aside from wiping out, like, your main enemy, like, for High Elves, that's the, the main Dark Elf factions, uh, you've also got to capture, I think it's eight of the major settlements, like, uh, uh, what is it, Reich, uh, Altdorf, um, uh, it's, uh, Skaven Blight, both one, uh, Corone, and so on. You've got to get like eight of those settlements. I will either capture them or have uh, diplomatic uh, control of them with uh, your your allies. And so yeah, like expanding out to capture eight of those. Like by the time you actually get them, you're basically like an unstoppable. Like you're you're the most powerful faction, uh, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of, uh, like, level 30 or so characters, uh, you've got just, like, stacks of dragons and whatever, uh, you know, you're making tens of thousands per turn, uh, and at that point the game becomes, like, really just, like, you've won at that point, there's not really any, uh, point in continuing. I don't know, it would be nice if the short campaign was actually short. Like, I don't know, for High Elves, if it was Unite Althuan, uh, wipe out the two Dark Elf factions that start to the northwest of you. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, you know, like, wipe out, like, say, the Cult of Pleasure and Nagarov. And then... I don't know, maybe get, like, you know, one or two of those other major settlements. Something like that, you know, you could beat that in 30 or 40 turns, and it wouldn't take nearly as long. Plus, it'd be more, I don't know, it makes more sense. Like, why are the High Elves going on, like, a world rampage to conquer everywhere? It should just be, you know, they get rid of the, the Dark Elves and they, uh, you know, unite all Thuan. Same with, like, I did a Bretonia playthrough and it was all... Well, it is a bit more themed because it has, it has the Errantry War. Like, their campaign is actually, like, you... You get uh, chivalry just by doing stuff. Uh, you know, fighting battles and so on. And then once you get enough chivalry, the Errantry War uh, final battle appears, and then you have to actually move one of your armies to it. Uh, you have a choice between either the Badlands, which is kind of south of the Empire, or uh, the Chaos Waste. So you have to get one of your armies through to there, and then you fight this final battle, which wasn't terribly difficult, but... Uh, yeah, it was much more reasonable. I, uh, I think if you went in, like, knowing that that was going to happen, it would be even better because you could push in that direction. Uh, it kind of took me more turns to do that because I wasn't expecting that, and I had mostly expanded kind of west and north and so on, and then when it said, okay, you got to get one of your guys uh, way to the south, it was like, okay, I... You know, here's another 30 turns of expanding that way. Although I suppose I could have tried just sending an army and just, you know, they, they camp out and they move slowly through just, al you know, various, uh, you know, enemy or ally or neutral territory and then get there and fight the battle, but... Uh... I was worried that, you know, I, don't, I didn't want them to get partway there and then they get you know, half obliterated or something, and then I gotta march them all the way back, or whatever. 
But yeah, more more campaigns like that would be nice. Like if the empires was just uh, you know unite the empire, uh, wipe out some of the, like the green skins and vampire count factions that are nearby. Or if like the vampire counts were just uh, you know uh, wipe out the oh or you know wipe out all the empire uh, and then that would be it. Kind of like shorter campaigns like that would be nice. So I would like to play through more and play through different races and stuff, but it it does get very kind of repetitive. Uh, Also, it would be nice if, I don't know, there's probably a mod for it, but, uh, yeah, doing that and then having growth increase a bit quicker would be nice, because, uh, like with the High Elves, uh, a lot of their, you don't get a lot of their heroes until Tier 4. Uh, like, you unlock the heroes at Tier 3, but you can only recruit one of them until you get to Tier 4. And getting to Tier 4 takes to, like, turn 70 or 80. Uh, and so you just, I don't know, for mo most of the game, you just don't use heroes because you just don't have them. Like, you have one of each kind, basically. And I thought that was kind of a waste. I'm not even sure what uh, what faction I'm gonna play yet uh, in three. It, I know it it does start off. There's like the the five Daemon factions, uh, two Kizla factions, and then I think two two Cafe factions and two Ogre Kingdoms factions. Uh, I had originally thought maybe like the Ogre Kingdoms would be nice because like a, an army of large units would be really different. Uh, but, I don't know, seeing some of, like, the, you know, plus, like, the Kislev and Cafe, I thought, okay, they're probably not that different than, like, High Elves or Empire. But, uh, and I, I had expected the Daemons to be kind of boring, because I thought, okay, it's just going to be a lot of melee units. You know, it's going to be five factions of nothing but melee units, which is going to just be horribly boring, but... Uh, seeing a lot of their, uh, like the trailers and uh, the YouTube stuff that's come out for them, they actually look really fun. So now I'm, I don't know, I'm really split on what I'm going to play. I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know, corn or, uh, I don't know, the corn is... They apparently play kind of like a horde faction, but you've got to just keep fighting and like always be in debt, but always be fighting. And that seems like it might be kind of stressful. Like I can see it, you know, just accidentally declaring war on too many enemies, and then now you're at war with everyone, and then you get screwed and your campaign's over. So I don't know. I'm, I might go with like maybe Siege to start with. Uh, Nurgle looks like they've got some kind of strange growth mechanics and stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Un Undivided, they have like all the units from all the daemons, apparently, and so I'm, I think I may want to save them because, I don't know, I could see maybe... I don't know, if I played them first, after that it's like, okay, corn is now just undivided but with a quarter of the units available sort of I, I don't know if it I don't know if that's exactly how it's gonna be but I don't, I'm a bit worried that that's how it'll end up feeling so I kind of want to save them for you know my third or fourth Damon playthrough uh, although the build your own Damon thing does look pretty fun. 
Yeah, I'm thinking, I don't know, probably Siege or uh, maybe Ogre Kingdom. This will be the first, uh, first one I play through. probably get one playthrough in and then Elden Ring will come out and then that's all I'll play hopefully for like the next month. Uh, I'm really hoping Elden Ring's gonna be good. Uh, I've been trying to stay pretty blind a bit. I haven't really watched uh, any more uh, release trailers or anything but you know I've been super hyped about it so I've been trying to like listen and to like no spoiler uh, like podcast episodes and stuff about it on uh, videos and but you know I have ended up seeing some stuff uh, unfortunately it does it does look like the bosses are tending towards being you know just fights against big monsters which I was hoping with the open world they're gonna be a bit more unique like I actually prefer like the gimmick bosses like uh Maiden Astraea and the, uh, uh, a lot of the other Demon Souls bosses, uh, even the, even like Sif or like the Four Kings, where, where they've got some unique, uh, twist to them. I really prefer those over just, uh, you know, big guy, you go in, circle around him, dodge his attacks, attack, back, and you just repeat. And it does look like, unfortunately, that's what they're tending towards, but uh, I'm still hoping with the open world, uh, it's going to be, you know, you can at least come up with some more unique ways of fighting them. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, with it being, like, that's one thing they've talked about a lot, is that, okay, it shouldn't be as difficult now because it's the open world, so if you fight a boss and you're having a hard time, just go somewhere else and come back, like, 20 levels later or whatever. Which, yeah, that's like how Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1 were, so, and that's what I actually, that's what I really liked about them, and to extend Dark Souls 2, was that, like, yeah, you could just go where you wanted and stuff, uh, I really didn't like that in Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro, where it was just like, okay, if, you know, if you're having a hard time with this boss, too bad, just keep fighting them over and over until, uh, you know, until you beat them. There was just nothing else to do. Oh, it does, yeah, it, it does look like it's gonna be pretty good. I'm really hoping it's back, like, you know, as good as Dark Souls was. Because when I, when I first played Dark Souls, yeah, I I played it and I played like 80 or 90 hours in two weeks. I beat it and then I immediately started a new file, beat it again, uh, started another file. I think I, you know, got like halfway through again. Uh, whereas, you know, Dark Souls 3, I, I barely beat it. I didn't do the DLC and then I just didn't play it for again for a couple of years uh, until I went halfway through it and was like, yeah, I, I don't like this. Uh, Sekiro I got part way through, like half or maybe like halfway, and then just quit. So I'm really hoping Elden Ring's back to uh, you know, if I I hope I like it as much as Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1. Which I'm I'm expecting it is gonna be at, at least closer to that. Uh, with the open world and everything. But uh, I don't know, who knows? What was that? I'm a hat. Uh, good for her, because I uh, don't want her getting stopped or anything. She's the healer, so. Oh. 
Oh, this is Lagos. Oh, wait, I'm in, yeah, this is like 12,000 BC or whatever. Or no, 12,000 BC? Yeah, so. Oh, okay, no, it's not Lagos. It's deeper. Oh. Giga Gaia. Isla's doing crazy damage to him, so get her going quicker. bad. Okay, where did I get to save last? Oh good, okay. I was... yeah, this is the point where like I was expecting, okay, like I've been save stating, but uh, th this is the point where like I was expecting, okay, it's gonna put me back at like, I don't know, the when I got the wings of time or whatever and I was gonna have to redo like 40 minutes of gameplay that's where normally I just say okay I'm done no more playing but uh okay uh well I'm gonna take a break to eat anyways and I may just grind off camera uh, or cause yeah that was that was bad like, he really, really wrecked us, so, uh, I don't know, maybe a few levels would help. Uh, anyway, be back shortly.